morning, happy Easter. So glad to have you here with us today. We usually do our, this service out at the Kiesacker farm, but we could not find a day that our schedules lined up with the wind. <laughs> there you go. So, we are here in the Presbyterian Church and we are glad to be with you. A couple of announcements. Wait, I don't have any. Because we've had all of the stuff. We should have had all of the stuff, yeah. Here's my announcement. These two ladies <laughs> worked hard last week. And so, if these are your pastors, reach out to them with a note or a card to say thank you. Let them know something that happened during the week that was particularly blessing for you because they put a lot of time into things. And your pastor is probably on Monday morning going to be lying in bed going, <laughs> I never want to wake up again. <laughs> We love this time of year, but it is tiring. So appreciate your pastor. Let us come in to worship. He is risen, alleluia. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed, alleluia. We gather as people on a journey. We, we believe, believe and we have doubts. doubts. We, we do, do good, good and we, we sin. sin. We, we are, are imperfect humans and still beloved by God. Love and grace, hope and faith. These are the essence of the one we call God. We, we seek forgiveness and, and grace from the one and from those we've harmed. Assured of that grace, we are ready to grow again. We, we yearn, yearn for a new way, a new perspective, perspective and a clear path. path. Though we are full of trust and full of doubt, we are here. Speak, Speak to us, God. Continue, continue creating us. us. Inspire our hearts, enlighten our minds, guide our actions. Amen. And now, let's go into the confession and assurance. Creator God, we confess that at times we are skeptics. At times we doubt that you exist because of the evil we have seen in the world, oppression, marginalization, and plain hate still plague our world. And it is hard to see your love and light. Sometimes even though who bear your name do not walk in your ways. Help us to see your goodness in this world. Help us to know your love. Fill us with your love and goodness so that we might love one another and lift up one another in faith. Amen. Amen. Words of assurance. The psalmist says, I am sure I shall see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Know that you do not wait alone. God has given us one another for this journey of faith to help one another. Know that you do not wait alone. Christ is with us. Be encouraged and encourage one another. Go and share the good news. Amen. Amen. Oh, that's a good confession. <laughs> Matthew 28, 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid and go and tell my brothers and sisters to go to Galilee. There they will see me. 
This is God's word. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. So usually we're out at the farm, so we don't talk about this text. We just read it, and then we like, I don't remember what we do. We we <laughs> sing, we sing, <laughs> we sing, we sing, and um, but we just kind of enjoy the the service, the reading. But it's kind of nice, Debbie, to sit here and talk about the Easter text. Yeah. I, I have always enjoyed this because of Jesus doing the unexpected thing. And I don't mean just raising, being raised from the dead and walking out of the tomb. That's not what I mean. The unexpected thing is the women of the story. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he uses people, not uses, but he employs people in the story that are marginalized, that are forgotten, that are overlooked, that you would least expect to be involved in the story. Two women. Two women. Two the women. The first evangelist. Yes. yes. Absolutely. I mean, the first evangelist. Go and tell. Go and tell. I mean, he sent them. Go and, they, and tell the and, good news. Yeah. And they never once said, eh, I don't think so. <laughs> you know? I, I, I'm not sure about this. I don't know. You know, they were so about this. I know nothing. <laughs> yeah, they were so filled with with joy and and with fear. You know, because mm -hmm. there's that fear of you know, gosh, what I've just seen is it really true? Can I really believe my eyes? And I'm pinching myself, and I'm pinching the other Mary, and you know, are we sure what just happened? And and then will they believe us? Mm -hmm. Will they believe? And don't we say that? If we said that in the confession, sometimes we have trouble believing, you know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. here they are. We have the same doubts that the Marys had. Yeah. The point that I love that. And I also love that Jesus, as they're running to do the work, they are headed with no hesitation to go do what they are supposed to do. And Jesus shows up in this version. Jesus shows up on the path and stops them. Mm -hmm. Not to keep them from doing the work, but there, to me, the powerful moment of that is that these women have not just been sent out, but they are sent with Christ. Mm -hmm. And when Christ shows up on that pathway, it's like he's showing up to say, no, really, you are not going alone. I am with you. I, am with you. Mm -hmm. I will be here. Really, I am here. They don't even hesitate to go running off to go tell everybody. And at that point, let me just go back to the story because I was reading it. And at that point, it was an angel of the Lord that sent them. Right. And they were, they were all in. They didn't even yeah. see Jesus. And then Jesus shows up. They didn't need Christ to show up. The Christ shows up. And I just think sometimes our faith is lived out in these moments when we desperately need to see Christ. And sometimes God shows up and sometimes God is absent and sometimes not. But sometimes our faith is showed up in ways where God surprises us and shows up to affirm our call as women in ministry to affirm that hope we're to have in the resurrection. And so this is a day in the church when it's harder to, for a pastor to preach because we don't have like the empty part. Like this is the story everybody knows. <laughs> but God's still going to show up. All right. And maybe we think we don't need God as much anymore because I remember, we all remember giving our sermon to an empty pew mm -hmm. three years ago. Yeah. And we were begging God to show up at that point. Mm -hmm. And so let's not forget that God shows up when we don't even know we need him. All right. He shows up unexpectedly. I when we have no hope, he brings us hope unexpectedly. Oh my gosh. When we're in despair, when we're struggling, even though it seems like we are in it forever, God shows up. Absolutely. And, you know, 
they told them, you know, the angel said, do not be afraid. Yeah, there it well, is again. There it is do again. Not, do, do not, not be, be afraid. afraid. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, and then Jesus says, yeah. do not be, be afraid, afraid and go tell the others in Galilee. Don't be afraid. Go tell them. Yeah. I've know. always found it interesting in the text that, you know, there's this um, angel that appears and is clothing is white as snow and there's an earthquake and the guards play dead. The guards are terrified and play dead. The women did not. They were not <laughs> terrified and they didn't play dead. They went and they told. You know, I've always found that interesting and I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm certainly not saying that somebody is weaker than somebody oh, else. Oh yes, we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, <laughs> I'm just saying, isn't, isn't that fascinating that those two guards, male or female, we don't know, we think they were male, um, but they responded in that man, they played dead because they were afraid. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it is about men being weaker than women no. or men playing dead and women going to do the thing um, because other versions of the gospels have the men going and doing things and running off and being you know, all that. I think it's more about the attitudes of the two. I, I was just going to say, I wonder if it's, they were ready. Yeah. They were ready and mm -hmm. maybe others were not quite. Right. I always wonder about those guards. Do the guards go on to believe in Christ? Is this mm -hmm. a life-changing, transforming, heartwarming <laughs> <laughs> yeah. moment? <laughs> yeah, okay, but his appearance was like lightning, okay? Let's get Martin Luther in there like lightning. <laughs> oh, yes. uh, but John Wesley had that moment where his heart was strangely was warm. Strangely yes. warm, yes. yes. Martin Luther just had to be struck by lightning. <laughs> well, you know. I mean, but he was, he was, um, he's like, this is it. I feel like, like I should say something Martin about Luther Calvin was here. like, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> huh? I feel like I should add Calvin into this. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. just speak his name and it's out there. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then there was John Calvin. Yeah. Then there was John Calvin. I can't tell you what he was doing, but then yes. there was that. <laughs> we'll get all three of the denominations going back. We come as one. Yes, we come uh, as one. <laughs> we do. We do. And this story is, if nothing else, about people coming as one. Yes, people coming. People coming. People going. People going. People knowing with confidence and faith, like you said, that hope is here, even in the hopeless times. Mm-hmm. You know, we're recording early, and so I have no idea what Holy Week will look like. But if it's anything like the week leading into Holy Week, our breath is going to be held. Yes, absolutely. We, we, we hope to meet Christ along the way who says, greetings, you know. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the greetings. Here I am. We need we to need meet that. Christ. We need that. I think sometimes it's okay to just say, oh Lord, do we need you. Mm -hmm. We need you to find us on the road, whether we're going with anticipation or hesitation. We need you. Yeah. And not to be afraid. Not to be afraid. God will bring hope. Amen. Amen. Let us go into a time of prayer. O oh God, with faces touched by the light of a new day and hearts warmed by our prayers and praises, we come before you to pray for the needs of our world. Into the light of Easter morning, we raise those who are struggling with illness, with despair over their lives, or with the breakdown of relationships. May the light of Christ shine upon them. Into the light of Easter morning, we bring those places in our world where war, violence, poverty, and need are the experience of everyday life. 
May the light of Christ shine upon them. Into the light of Easter morning, we bring the headline news of this week and past weeks. In particular, the senseless violence in our world. And we hold in our hearts the pain of those suffering from that violence, bereavement, or conflict. May the light of Christ shine upon them. And into the light of Easter morning, we bring ourselves the private struggles, the heart's yearnings, the hidden dreams, the unfulfilled potential. May the light of Christ shine upon us. And may the light of Christ shine upon us as we pray the words he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive our debtors trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Offering breathes resurrection and reconciliation into this world. And it does that because those gifts we, are give, we give are then used for this world, for things like food banks and mission opportunities and giving to people in need and work and mission of the church in this world. So we give because of all that God has given us, giving hoping that God can use it. Let us pray. Oh wait, we have to tell you how to give. <laughs> we give to the food bank, Edith's house, by sending offering to the Ministerial Association. And you can give to the Ministerial Association at the same time. And those gifts are sent to 401 D Street, the Lutheran Church, or to Father Kiefer at St. Augustine's Church in Washington. You can give to any of these three congregations, to the Methodist at 400 C Street, to the Presbyterians, and to Susan Keysucker, and to the Lutherans, 401 D Street. However you give, give knowing that God's resurrection is at hand. Let us pray. God of great gifts, this morning we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you thanks. With resurrection humming in our hearts, our minds are turned to your song of peace. We joyfully present these gifts to you, a tangible chorus of thanksgiving, a harmony of hope for your kingdom come. Amen. Now receive the benediction. Go out into the world in the joy and peace of the resurrection of Lord Jesus. Care for his redeemed creation. Follow him as children of the light. Make disciples by your life and words and glorify him by your dedication and love. So may he bless you with his gift of the Holy Spirit and may be with you until his kingdom comes. Hallelujah, amen. amen. He is risen, hallelujah. He is risen indeed, hallelujah.